Hello and welcome to Emma Reads Reddit. Today I'm reading from r slash today I fucked up. But first, let's play r slash drunk or a kid, where I give you a real life scenario and you guess whether it was a drunk or a kid. This one was posted by a false alarm. Came home and saw my cat. I wanted to hug it, but it ran away from me. I ran after her for a good 15 minutes while crying because she wouldn't let me say hi. Love me. But what do we think? Is this a drunk or a kid? Find out at the end of the video. Now back to r slash today I fucked up, where a username I'm not going to even try to work out posted this. Today I fucked up by giving my coworker a nickname on Facebook Messenger. Did you know that if you give someone a nickname on Facebook Messenger, the person you nicknamed is notified? Because I sure didn't. I'm fairly good friends with this attractive co-worker and we talk on Facebook Messenger pretty often. About a month ago, I stumbled upon the nickname function in Messenger and I thought it'd be fun to name him McBulge Pants because of the distinct features that I've noticed when he wears certain pants. He never said anything, so I thought my fun little secret was safe until he sent me a message today. Hey, can you name me back to my own name? I don't want people to get the wrong impression. Oh, I should mention we're both guys. He's straight, and I guess this is how he found out I'm gay. So things have been kind of awkward. Too long, didn't read. Came out to my co-worker by accidentally highlighting his features in a nickname. In the comments, we have a couple of similar stories. My mom didn't know in iMessenger group chats that it renamed it for everyone. Named a work chat. Waste of time. I don't know if Facebook still has this, but you could organise your friends in groups like friends, acquaintances, family, work. That way I could make posts visible only for co-workers or only for family. I had a group called Annoying, where I put people that used to make annoying comments on my posts. These were people that were co-workers or family that would be offended if I had blocked them. Well, happens that years ago the name of these groups were visible to anyone. I learned that when someone asked why they were on the annoying group. Wait, those lists are visible? Oh god, please no! Random Habit 89 had this to say. I don't know whether to delete my kill or fuck list first. Either way, I have some splaining to do. This next story was posted by Totem Snacks. Today I fucked up by leading my male students into thinking that I had a very erect left nipple. For context, I am a female teacher in my early 30s and I am the head of computer science in a large international school in Europe. My classes are largely male when the subject becomes elective at the age of 14. So onto the stiff nip scandal. This morning I woke in my usual half dead way and plucked my bra out of the dryer and popped it on followed by my white top. It is figure hugging but appropriate. I put a jumper over, coat etc and left. I drive to work and keep my jumper on until it warms up in the classroom. My class arrives at 9am. I took off my jumper and one boy's jaw dropped. He whispered to his friends who did the old glance and huh second look. I looked at them, but didn't think much of it. I don't often wear white, so I assumed they were just surprised. Anyway, all lesson they kept calling me over, which arose my suspicions. Usually these boys are pretty independent and glancing at my chest. I was feeling a little self-conscious and thought that maybe the white was a bad idea and it was not smart of me despite it being a high neck top. I am a D cup, so sometimes I get stares, so the white may be a no-no. But then I thought better of it. The top is fine. They are in the throngs of puberty and we've just been returned from a lockdown, so I'll ignore it and let them get it out of their systems, was my line of thought. The lesson ended and when they finally left, they all stayed behind individually to chat about bogus things. I went to the bathroom to check in the mirror and oh crap! There, as plain as day, was a nipple protruding from my left breast. It looked so hard, I'm pretty sure it could cut through ice. Panic set in. I was on autopilot this morning. Maybe I didn't put my bra on properly? Is there a hole in the bra? Why is it so damn stiff? So I fish down there and feel my nipple. It wasn't hard at all. Confused, I look in the mirror and still the phantom nipple was taking centre stage on my boob. 
I feel it finally. Should have done that to the start within retrospect. And it's something hard on the outside of my bra. I finally look and there it was. A button with a shape very much nipple-like. At least with my top over it, it had clearly fell off the shirt I had put in the dryer and had attached itself to my bra. It was embedded in almost the correct place for a nipple, which of course it friggin' did. Although granted the placement was pretty high, I looked like I had a porn star boob job. But only on lefty, righty remained unbotched. When I see these boys again, I want to show them the button and say, it wasn't my nipple, which I can't do of course. What if they didn't notice? They noticed. I would be bringing nipples into the mix. I learned my lesson when I was telling them about jiggle physics. Never tell them about jiggle physics. But next time I see them, I shall burst into the room with confidence, do my thing and distract them with Reddit. I shall hold my head up high and my fake nipple button even higher, or just shrink into a ball, still figuring that one out. Too long, it didn't read, wore white, exposed teenage boys to a button masquerading as a nipple died a little inside. Down in the comments, Fapokok had this to say, slowly move the button around, different spot every day. Solenya says, Phantom Nipple, I think I found a new name for my band. Well, at least something good has come out of this situation. This next one was posted by Rembeck2. Today I fucked up by trying to help a small restaurant's Thanksgiving dinner takeout website but wound up making things way worse. My girlfriend and I both tested for COVID, so going to either of our parents' homes for Thanksgiving dinner is out of the question. Neither of us did any grocery shopping, so we were trying last minute to find a restaurant in the area that offers Thanksgiving delivery dinners. You know, support local business. We were in the middle of doing our research by comparing food options and prices when I found one website that looked like it offered a pretty good deal. Three course meal, additional appetizers, Optional cocktails, nice. Only thing is, it's a little pricey. So maybe we can skip the cocktails and open one of the wine bottles we've been saving for a nice night in. Instead, I decide to click through the order just to see how much the dinner might cost. First page, I select a 4pm delivery for Thursday, November 26th, 2020. Second page, I select two Thanksgiving dinners. Third page, I select two additional appetizers. Fourth page, I try to skip the cocktail option and, oh, it looks like I need to choose a cocktail before I place my order? Odd. Okay, let's just select one to keep things moving along. Fifth page, review and confirm my order, but I don't want a cocktail, so I'm trying to do a little backdoor manoeuvre to edit my order before putting down my credit card. Hmm, no luck. Might be best to call the restaurant and ask whether I can place the order over the phone. When I call, I explain the situation to the nice hostess. My timing is pretty good because the kitchen is still getting prepared for tonight's dinner and it sounds like there's some downtime to address the website problem. She tells me not to worry, everything will be fixed shortly, so I should try again in a few minutes. But she takes down my name and number just in case they need help? Okay, sure, no problem. The call ends, a few minutes go by. I try the website again. I click through the first page, second page and third. So far, so good until, wait, the cocktail page has been completely removed and so has the option to review and confirm my order. Maybe it's my phone. I'll try on my laptop. Nope, same problem. I call the restaurant back and the nice hostess answers again. Hi, I just called. I'm having a different problem with the website though. After some frantic, inaudible screaming just a few feet away from the phone, a man picks up and asks what the problem is. I explain the situation and he assures me he knows exactly how to fix it. Even though he's been interrupting me for most of the time I was talking and I'm pretty sure he hasn't heard a word I've said. Godspeed, sir. The call ends. A few minutes go by. I try the website again. The option to place a Thanksgiving dinner is completely gone. Fuck. This is all my fault. I should have just ordered the damn cocktail and have been done with it. Before I can call the restaurant back, my phone is already ringing. I answer and the nice hostess is locked in the middle of a screaming match with the man I spoke with last time. No idea what their relationship is, but I imagine it makes for some pretty interesting dinner shifts. I speak up a little. Hello? 
Apparently, we're on first name basis now because she stops Miguel to ask whether I've seen this mess. Yes, sorry, I was just about to call back. It looks like I can't place a Thanksgiving dinner order at all now. The man pleads for the phone, then assures me, again, that he knows how to fix it. They'll call me back when the website is ready. Excellent customer service. The call ends and my girlfriend is quietly giving me one of those what did you do stares from the other side of the couch. The dog is more understanding. He gets me. A few minutes go by and I curiously refresh the page a few times to catch glimpses of their progress. The first refresh reveals that the Thanksgiving dinner option is back. Promising. The second refresh reveals that this Thanksgiving dinner is apparently being offered in 2050. Weird. The third refresh reveals that the website is now blue. Okay. A fourth refresh reveals the page I'm looking for is no longer available. Mother of God, forgive me for my sins. My phone rings again and this time it is a new man with a low, deep voice. We have not spoken before but he knows my name. I start to sweat. But that's probably just the Covid symptoms. He's calling from the same restaurant number as before but this time there is no commotion in the background. Everything is eerily silent on his end. He calmly asks me to explain everything from the very beginning. Once I'm done, he tells me he'll call me back shortly. The call ends and I keep my eyes locked forward. My girlfriend loves it when I pretend she's not there. It's our thing. The phone rings again and the man with the deep voice asks me to go back to the website. He's worked his magic and the site has been miraculously restored to how I originally found it when I first tried to place my order. Over the phone, I talk him through each step and he understands what needs to be done. He tells me again that he'll call me back in a bit. Call ends and I slowly lean over to my girlfriend to proudly let her know that I'm helping to leave the world in a better place than I found it. It's our civic duty. My phone rings again. I answer and the man with the deep voice asks me to try again. Mazel tov! The nightmare is over! I thank him profusely for his help and I can hear him laugh a little at the absurdity of the entire situation. I go through the website one last time to place the order and realise our Thanksgiving takeout dinner for two is going to cost, um, over $250. Yikes! So, I clicked on the next restaurant on our list and continued our search. I'm going to hell already anyway. And after all that, they didn't even order from there. The end was my favourite part. Now back to r slash drunk or a kid. So who was it that chased their cat around trying to give it love? It was... A drunk. Very, very drunk. I don't even remember it clearly. Did you guess right? Let me know in the comments. I've finally broken my losing streak and got this one right. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the daily content from Emma Reads Reddit. See you tomorrow.